You know, 2020 happened, and I think as, as patriots, we all know that what's happening in our country right now is not us. We can do better, and, and we must do better than the way we're operating right now. And as a national security guy, I was already staying up most nights about the things that I had been exposed to in the Situation Room. I talked a little bit in Texas about the, the China threat. You know, of course, in Georgia, the runoff happened, didn't go the way we wanted, and folks started reaching out to me saying, Latham, it's... It's time for you to consider stepping into an arena like this, because it's going to require somebody very different to beat Raphael Warnock next year. And George has always had a national security expert in the Senate, all the way back to Richard B. Russell. And so for Melissa, I mean, she knew how concerned I was about where our country's going. And I, candidly, I don't think I'd be doing this, though, if I weren't a father, because it's, it's our children's future that we're fighting for here. And watching the country just backslide the way it's done these past 18 months or so is just not acceptable. And it's time for folks, especially from our generation, to start stepping into this arena, even though we could list off 100 reasons as to why it made zero sense for us. Uh, the margin we've had as a country is no longer there. Uh, but we can win it back, and that's what we're going to do. And, and the mission of our campaign is to bust open the gates for folks like everybody in this room to step into, the, step into this arena and take our country back. So it's a family decision. <laughs> Consult your spouse and, and pray, uh, but we need more folks to, to jump in this arena. Latham, you served in and around the question of Afghanistan in the field as a Navy SEAL, in the NSC, at the White House. Um, God, give us some high-level thoughts on what you've watched the last few weeks. Yeah, I mean, candidly, I'm still absorbing it, like most of us are. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine a, a greater debacle than what we've seen. And this is close to home for me. I mean, before joining the military, I actually backpacked through Afghanistan. I speak the language fluently. Uh, and then I deployed there and then sat in the very seats of the White House where these terrible decisions are now being made. And it's just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine a couple things. One that they didn't factor in there's a fighting season in Afghanistan. And we've been there 20 years. There's no excuse for not factoring that in. And the fighting season starts in the spring and goes through the summer, and then the Taliban packs their bags and they head to the Hindu Kush and then to Pakistan for the fall and winter months. And so the fact that they didn't account for a fighting season, the fact that we left over $80 billion in critical military equipment, which was paid for by who? All of us. And now they want to raise our taxes, and that's how you demonstrate good stewardship of American taxpayer dollars? I mean, give me a break. I'll tell you, when I was in command, and the vets know this in the room, I mean, if, if one of my men had lost a piece of critical military equipment, I would have been relieved of command. And the fact that we left all of this to our adversaries, and there's been no accountability, it's just mind-blowing. And then finally, the, the fact that we left Americans behind. I mean, we do not do that as a country. And there's no excuse for that either. So real quick, I'll say that that's the bad news. I try to be positive. I've reflected a lot about this, Evan. And the one thing that's come to mind that I think is important for every American to remember, and candidly, I want every, every member of the Taliban to hear this, is that after September 11th, we entered into country on October 7th. And we had already pummeled the Taliban and toppled them out of power by December in less than two months. So they can have their victory lap right now, but it, 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 it's a honeymoon because my message to them is if there's ever a whiff of another 9-11 emanating out of Afghanistan, round two is going to be much more swift and violent than the first. And don't, don't underestimate America. What you're seeing out of Washington today is not our country. We are still the greatest and strongest country on the planet. And let us never forget that. A lot of conversation on STEMI checks, as they're called, uh, the future of work, universal basic income, do we even need to work? You, you've got an awesome story. Your brother Ashby is a hero to many. Uh, tell us a little bit about your conversations with him and, and, and his experience with work. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, probably the biggest piece of feedback I receive on the trail is from small business owners that still tell me, Latham, I can't find workers. I cannot compete with a free government paycheck. It's crippling my business. What am I gonna do? I mean, I hear this every day from business leaders. 
And one of the things that is a mission of our campaign as well, especially as a next generation conservative running for US Senate, is to change the game as it relates to messaging. Because the most frustrating thing to me, and I know it's the same for y'all, is how as conservatives, we can stand firm on our policies and our values all day, every day, because they're right and they're just. But what the left does is they outflank us on the messaging, they take the high ground, and they win. And I want to end that with my campaign. And so I, I, I told my team after hearing this, I thought, we've got to change the messaging on this. And finally, it occurred to me, we, our messaging on this issue needs to be dignity, not dependency. Hmm. Because as conservatives, we seek a limited government that creates economic opportunity for the American worker, and therefore provides them that dignity. And we're literally seeing the opposite of that today out of Washington in this large government full of false promises that creates this moral hazard dependency on that government. It's very personal to me. I was sharing with Evan. I've got a fraternal twin brother uh, with Down syndrome named Ashby, who's just the most amazing human being you'll ever meet. And he works at Publix grocery store. And when COVID first hit, we, we pulled him from work because we didn't know what the virus was, what it would do to any of us, let alone someone with Downs. And finally, in consultation with his doctor, after four or five months, we noticed he wasn't the same. And so we decided together to send him back to work. We didn't check a box for unemployment because we were afraid of him getting COVID because we see the dignity that he receives every day from having that job. And to think that at scale, thousands of Americans are being stripped of that same dignity due to the policies that you're describing, it's just heartbreaking to me. And it's something that, you know, we, we can win as conservatives. Who's seeking power? Is it the ones that want the limited government that creates that economic opportunity and that dignity? Or is it what we're seeing today? And we just got to win on the messaging. So dignity, not dependency. That's amazing. I like that.